Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and I want to just go over real quick. Uh, all the games are over, all the uh, things are over, and this is the current rankings. I'm just going to throw some stuff out there. This is not necessarily my opinion, but I'm just going to throw some stuff out there. Stuff for you guys to think over, and uh, stuff like that. But currently it's Alabama 1, Oregon 2, TCU 3, Florida State 4, Ohio State 5, and Baylor 6. Those are the only teams that can really get in there's no one else because they all won not a single one loss so it's down to those six uh it's really down to three teams competing for the last spot in tcu baylor and ohio state because alabama and oregon should be locks um oregon beat the number seven ranked team so they should be in alabama beat the um what is missouri the 16th or 7th 16th yeah 16th ranked team uh and a low ranked two loss team so they should be in easily because they're number one they obviously won't fall out and Florida State's undefeated so they should obviously be in Uh, so I just want to throw a couple of things at you guys to think about about uh, the TCU Baylor and Ohio State um, instances the Baylor TCU head-to-head thing is the big thing I think head-to-head should matter but it hasn't always mattered Uh, there's five or six instances throughout uh, just the last 20 or 30 years where it hasn't mattered and uh, one of them, just for example, was 08 Texas in Oklahoma. Texas beat Oklahoma uh, in the Red River rivalry, and they both ended the year 11-1, and but Oklahoma got the nod to be in the um, Big 12 championship and ultimately the national championship with, uh, with losing to the team that they were tied with atop the Big 12 um, at that point, the Big 12 South. Uh, so that didn't matter there. Uh, another thing is the the people are looking at just the last few weeks and how a team has progressed. But if we're just going to do that, then that discredits anything from the beginning of the season. You have to take into consideration that Ohio State did lose to a 6-6 six and six Virginia Tech team. They had to squeak it out against Virginia to get into uh the play or get into a bowl game or eligible for a bowl game they might not even get to a bowl game uh tcu has the best one loss at this point out of anybody because baylor is number six uh they have the best one loss obviously florida has the best loss because i don't have a loss but i'm not bringing them up they're in i'm not taking florida state out so it's, it's really it's down to tcu ohio state and baylor and if you look at it TCU has the better resume than Baylor and Ohio State. Baylor has the head-to-head over TCU, and Ohio State has looked better over the last weeks. TCU could have easily scored 80 points today. They ran out that fourth quarter, and they took a kneel when they were inside like the five. So the 55-3 to was a whole lot worse than 55-3. to And uh, they looked bad in the first half, but granted, so did Oregon on Friday. Uh, they both turned it on in the third quarter and second half and blew blew their opponents away. Uh, this, uh, this honestly, I've heard the argument of having eight teams and it honestly wouldn't make it any better. Cause if you look at it, the top six would be in, then you would have to argue Arizona would be out now. And so would Kansas state, but you'd have to argue for the final two spots, Michigan state, Mississippi state. Uh, let's see. Well, actually most of the two lost teams lost. So it might be actually pretty easy to just slide up Michigan State and Mississippi State. Uh, but it would have made it a whole lot inter- more interesting if the top teams would have lost because it would have given you more two loss teams. Uh, but everything held serve today. So honestly, since they put TCU so far up, I can't... Obviously they can, but it would be a strut. It means that Ohio State and Baylor were pretty far behind TCU because TCU jumped Florida State. So it means the committee really liked TCU. And... Uh, I'm interested tomorrow at 12.30 to see what happens, um, but you can argue for any of those three teams. You can argue for any of those teams really over Oregon or Alabama because Alabama didn't play anybody out of conference. West Virginia proved not to be that great. Uh, I think they ended the year 7-5, and five, so they really weren't that great. Um, Oregon has the most quality out-of-conference win, beating Michigan State. Uh, Florida State, I will give them credit. The teams that they schedule, Notre Dame does not count as an out-of-conference scheduled opponent. It's the random draw that they got from the ACC because Notre Dame is now affiliated with the ACC, so they play teams. It was the random draw. Florida State did not schedule that game. It was randomly drawn. 
I don't I keep hearing people say that Florida State scheduled the game. No, it was randomly drawn. Notre Dame's going to play teams from the ACC. They just aren't going to be in the conference. Uh, and Florida State just happened to be the team this year. So they didn't schedule that game. And they don't schedule Florida. They play them every year. That's not a scheduled game. It's not like a game they went out and tried hard to get. But I will give them credit. They tried to play Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State was supposed to be a lot better this year than what they were. Uh, the win that they got today over Oklahoma does make it look a little bit better. But Florida State made an effort, I guess, to go out and play someone. But uh, they flopped. West Virginia flopped for Alabama. Oregon got the good game with Michigan State. They'll go to East Lansing next year, which I hope to go to that game. Um for another nice uh, season, op- or not, uh, out of conference game, Baylor played absolutely no one. Supposedly, Art Bryles was trying to argue that going and playing at Buffalo was a good quality out of conference win. I don't know what he's on. Uh, I don't even know why he sh- he picked that one to lobby for. Actually, I don't, they didn't play. Buffalo was the best team they played out of conference because they played SMU, which won its only game today over UConn, who sucks in football. And they played an FCS team. So TCU has them by far out of conference because TCU at least scheduled a decent opponent in Minnesota, which if they would have beaten Wisconsin last week, which they had a shot, they would have been playing in the Big Big Ten Championship against Ohio State tonight. So uh, Minnesota's not a bad team. They started out, what was it, 7-2? 7-2 or something like that. They started out pretty well. They were in... The committee tried to keep them in the top 25 because the, t- the the committee likes TCU for whatever reason. Uh, and so it, it my, my other thing is whether Florida State is four or whether they are one, it doesn't make a difference. Alabama and Florida State are both closest to the Sugar Bowl in Louisiana, so they're going to play there. Whoever's number one, Alabama's going to play there, and Oregon's going to play in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. If Oregon somehow jumped Alabama, which they shouldn't, the Oregon at one would still go to Pasadena, and Alabama would go to Louisiana um, for the Sugar Bowl. And so Florida State, all that they should really care about is that uh, they are matched up with Alabama because it's going to put them where they want to go, to the Sugar Bowl. And uh, TCU, TCU or whoever, Ohio State, Baylor, is just going to get screwed, and they're going to have to go out and play Oregon in California. They're going to have to make the trip, even though it's not a short trip for for Oregon to to Pasadena, to the Rose Bowl. Um, but obviously you've got plenty of time. It's not like you got to travel tomorrow there, so it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, but those were just a couple of things that I put out. My top four is Alabama, Oregon, Florida State, and and TCU, just because I think TCU has more quality. TCU does have more quality ones. They're 4-1 and one against uh, the top 25. Ohio State is 2-0, and oh, and Baylor is 3-0, and oh, I believe. Um, but just, just in my opinion, head-to-head hasn't always mattered. It's not the end-all, be-all. Um, that Texas-Oklahoma situation is an example. Um, the I think it was 9 Texas Tech. Oklahoma and Texas all beat each other in a circle. Uh, they all had one loss to one of those three teams, and it it ended up with Texas over. It was weird. Texas was over Oklahoma, who beat them, and or no, no, Texas was over Texas Tech, who beat them, and Oklahoma was over Texas Tech, who who they beat, but they were under Texas, who beat... It was just a, I don't know how to explain it. It was weird. That year was weird when they had three Big 12 teams that were... And Texas would have won that national championship had Colt McCoy not gotten injured in the first half and then that backup come in and throw a pick six to end the half. Um, but that's for... That's, that's another day, another story. But um, I do think TCU should be four. Um, in my opinion, the committee, it will be one Alabama, two Oregon three uh Ohio State and four Florida State uh which that'll be that'll set up some interesting matchups uh Oregon Ohio State and Bama Florida State um if those are the matchups Florida or Alabama should play Oregon in the national championship which I think I have a small shot at going to uh we'll have to see but uh just let me know what your guys' opinion are uh sorry about the lack of uploads um last week was a little bit crazy 
Um, I wasn't home, and then this upcoming week's going to be a little bit crazy because I have finals, but uh, probably Friday we'll start uh, me uploading a little bit more. And so, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, these aren't necessarily my opinions. Some of them are just facts, uh, and then some are opinions, but let me know uh, what you guys think and give me your top four, and I will uh, catch you guys in the next video. Make sure to tune in to ESPN if you want to see the, uh, the rankings officially released at uh, 1230 Eastern Time tomorrow. All right, guys, peace out.